Hi guys, uh, behind me I have some of the items that I wear through a race weekend or through a season. Check it out. Here we have the race suit that you'll see me in. It's fireproof, so the car's on fire. I'm pretty sure I'm safe for, I think it's like 90 seconds or something crazy. Ultimately, it's just a big onesie, but it's, it's safe. So, and I love that it's black. It used to be white, but that really showed the sweat. So I'm glad we've gone to black. The race suit is made of a fabric called Nomex. It's the most fire retardant stuff we can find and light. They used to be lighter, but I think year on year, you know, the, they're always trying to improve safety. So it's got thicker over the last few years. And so it's not the most breathable. So when you're in Singapore, you're just sweating before you even get in the car. And, you know, there's no AC in the car, obviously. <laughs> you know, people ask that. Um, and you can't have, like, people will be like, why don't you have, like, uh, you know, cold water tubes or coolant or something going through your suit? But everything's about weight. You know, the suit has to weigh, I think this one probably weighs, like, seven or 800 grams. Weight is everything in, in our sport. And so the driver, my kit and me, I'm always weighed every time I get in the car, every time I get out and you are added to the car's weight ultimately. In an ideal world, you want to be the lightest you can be, but back in the day you would, because then you could move, you could have ballast to move it around, so the taller drivers couldn't get to my weight, and so it'd have, you would have an advantage, is where now all the drivers have to be 80 kilos with their kit, and maybe there's taller drivers that can't get to 80 kilos, they'll be maybe 82 or something, and they're carrying that penalty. This is just the Nomex um, underwear, so it's like thermal underwear that you'll go skiing in. It doesn't breathe a huge amount, it's usually just drenched. Um, it's actually a really nice fabric, this one. These are the race boots. There was a period of time before where our weight was even more important, and we didn't have this new rule where you have to be 80 kilos. And so I was trying to get the weight down as much as possible. So you're cutting back everything. You're trying to reduce the amount of rubber on the back. I put this carbon plate on a boot that I designed just for heel support in the cockpit. But it's like a sock. It doesn't weigh a lot. It's quite flimsy. Key is to have not too thick sole so you can feel the throttle and feel the brake. And again, these are fireproof. Back in the olden days when like Ayrton was racing, for example, they would have been made of suede, the boot would come higher to protect the ankle from um, a crash, so like, so the wishbone doesn't come through and pierce through your leg. So we don't have that, it's all carbon fibre now, so you're more safer, safe inside and it's really about weight and um, function. Ultimately, so many things I've, I should have patterned stuff, uh, but when I was started to work with Puma and we sat with him and I just, I put him in the office and I'll be like, okay, well, why do you have this? Why is there extra material here? When I put it on, why do you, why is there this? You know, so I just asked lots of questions. I was like, can we cut this down? Can we cut this off? Um, for example, we, we now have a, a lead that comes through here and comes out here. So just trying to talk about function and trying to make things simple, as often people make things complicated. And with the boots, um, I think many of the drivers are giving input because we, we're using them all the time. I think we got to a really good place. We had the lightest boots at one stage, and then now we don't need to have the lightest ones, so it, we have like a happy medium. But I still want to like create a, a really sick boot. That's like my goal over the next years. This is my helmet from 2022. I got my first helmet when I was eight and it was called an FM, it was red. You know, all the other cool kids, all the other cool drivers had like, it was an Arai helmet and that's like what the cool kids had. It was like having cool kicks. And that was my dream as a kid. So eventually my dad saved up, my dad and my stepmom and my mom put money together and bought me a PlayStation for Christmas. But I was like, I want a new helmet. I was like, well, you, we can't afford to get you a PlayStation. And so we took the PlayStation back and I got a new helmet. And my dad sat, we sat together, and he was like, what colors do you want? And he chose yellow because he was nervous when I would go down to turn one, 40 or 50 go-karts going into the first corner, he couldn't see which one I was. So he chose yellow, I chose red, blue, and green. And then he 
went to B and Q, and he got like all the mask and tape and all this stuff, and he, he sprayed it in the in the shed. I think the helmet was 300 pounds, and then to get one of the professional painters to paint it was another three or 400 pounds, and we didn't have that money. That's why my dad painted my my helmet. He did an amazing job. Since then, I tried to incorporate that original design every year. So I started to work with this amazing designer in Brazil. So I've been to white, I've been to, it was white and red for a period of time, it was yellow a long time ago. Then I went to purple and black in uh, 2020. And then I didn't want to bring neon, neon into my design because Valentino Rossi kind of owned the neon. And then he retired and I was like, okay, now is my moment, I can now grab it. And so I brought it into our design last year and I, and I love it. And I kind of feel proud to kind of carry on the baton for him maybe, I don't know. But ventilation is key. So this helmet, the one I had before for a long, long time had no ventilation. This has amazing ventilation, great protection. In here there's like a super thick plate if some, some, like something metal was to hit us at over 100 miles an hour. And it's all about like front impact and I think rear impact, but like the side is quite soft, I think. You can probably squeeze the side because that's not really ever uh, a scenario that you'll be in. Um, and anyways, purple has always been my favorite color. This exact um, purple was on my go-kart when I was nine. Everything was anodized purple, it was the coolest car ever. And so I brought it back and put it on my, um, on my helmet. Um, and then purple inside. When you're younger, on your way up, you have like one helmet maybe for several years. I always like took the visor off, cleaned it, kept it like spotless and, and looked after it the best way I could. So when you get to Formula One, <laughs> you know, like I have a new helmet every weekend. Um, so I have a lot of helmets through my career. Terror ships, the biggest worry about these is when you pull them off, you have to be really careful where you put it. If you go up, it will go into the engine intake. If you go out to the right, most often the side pod will suck it down into the brake duct. And if it goes into the brake duct, your race is over because the, the brakes will just overheat. And it's happened so many times. Also, if you're following a car and they take the, take the tear off off, it's like Mario Kart. <laughs> you know, like if you're following another driver and they take their tear off off, it could go up into the head. It could be stuck on your, in your front brake duct. Those are the things that you're at risk when you're racing. So I have to be really careful. I have to put it out and put it high, like kind of out as much, as far as my arm can go. Um, and hope that I'm at high speed that it gets sucked out the back, so. The gloves, this is all made with Nomex again. And this is just extra fireproof. You know, you all saw Nicky Lauda, who had a big crash and was in the fire. The only thing is that it's like freaking roasting. In this, the helmet, the underwear you have, the socks, the the boots, the suit on top of that, and then you, either side of you, you have the two radiators, you have the, the, uh, the um, hybrid batteries behind your butt, and all these uh, hydraulic tubes that are going either side of your legs. So you're just sitting around a big furnace. It's, so you're just hot a lot of the time. You just have to complain and ask them to make sure that they make those changes. So um, like, for example, this year in our car, we have better circulation for that. Um, these gloves, again, fireproof, and then we have grip, just like this grip stuff, just because the forces that you have coming through the steering wheel, you know, you're holding on for dear life, but back in the day, they would use suede on the wheels, which was pretty cool, like you'd maybe have in a road car, maybe. Um, but that wears, that goes shiny and then gets slippery, and if it's wet, it's pretty useless. So we have like a rubber, which if it's wet, still grips up, and this helps with that.